Alright, sup nerds, um, I'm making this video today just because uh, to make a quick Elder Node guide. I know there's a lot of new players on places like the r slash Elsor Discord who have been asking the same questions over and over again about Elder Node uh, gear, so I just wanted to uh, make a video and kind of get it all done in one go. Alright, so first question is what is Elder Node gear? It's currently the best armor set in the game. It gives you the most damage, highest stats, highest level, yada yada yada. So how do you get it? Well, to start off, you're going to want to get the base set, which is over here in... So here we are. In uh, episode 28 of the Epic Quest. So you do all of this, which is Hall of L, which is 11-1. Uh, you clear all these story quests, and then you go to here, which is 11.2, and you'll be given an empty set of Elry Node pieces. Top, bottom, gloves, and shoes, like that. And then you're going to have an empty set. Now, by itself, this L this empty Elry Node set isn't good at all. What you need to do is you want to fill it with tiers. Oh, and another thing is, if you actually go to the blacksmith, you can actually craft yourself an extra set like this, right here. Um, It'll be useful if you want to have different sets or different gloves or different shoes or different whatever setups. That's going to be helpful. So like I said, by itself, these Elrionode gear pieces, if they're empty, they aren't that useful. So what needs to happen is they need to be filled with these uh, L tiers, okay? And so what you do with L tiers is you go over here, you talk to our boy Denif, yeah, and... Uh, so let's, let's for example, just take a look at my top piece, right? You hit this L tier assembly, you select the piece that you want to work on, and so for example, it's this one. Now, El Reno gear has four types of tiers that you're going to want to fill it with. So you have the triangle, the square, the hexagon, the circle, okay? And only after you've filled up four of these tiers of a single color is the set really going to turn on and actually start to be worth something. Uh, so to start off, there's three types of tiers, or three sets of tiers. It's uh, red, blue, and purple. So as you can see in my inventory, I have a wide assortment of these. So red, red is primarily for physical damage, blue is for magic damage, and purple is more spec towards PvP. So, um, for PvE, for primarily primarily player versus environment players, you're going to want to have red or blue, depending on your class. And for people who like to do PvP, purple is going to be a lot better. I know some people like to build a purple set that has pl uh, player versus environment oriented tiers in them, and so they kind of make like a hybrid set that's doing okay in both, uh, and that's actually a lot cheaper to make than one of each. Um, anyways, if we mouse over, we can look at the set effect. So uh, as you see on the second column, this is for the red set. The first two out of four gives you 5% physical attack. Three out of four gives you MP consumption reduction. And then four out of four gives you 10% skill damage. And if you're on a blue set, it's gonna have magical damage instead of physical damage. So that's whatever. And then this is a purple set. If you look at the set effect, you have MP gain, uh, elemental resistance, and a lot of additional damage and a lot of reduced damage. So that's why they're spec that way. Now that we've gotten the three set types out of the way, we're going to talk about the tier types. So like I said, triangle, square, hexagon, circle. So triangle is going to be the L tier rank. And what this does is it basically changes your, uh, your raw stat that you get from here. So for example, uh, like I said before, some people like to make multiple sets, so I do right here. So for example, if we compare, um, let's see, what can we compare? Maybe we can compare my plus seven purple shoes and my plus seven uh, red shoes. So for example, we notice this one has like 665 physical attack and it's ranked 26. This one has 638 physical attack and it's ranked 21. So that's what the triangle does. It changes those base values. Um, now, back to here. Uh, the second one, square, is going to be specific skill damage increase. So this is going to vary from class to class. Uh, my personal class likes to stack Flying Kite and Shadow Weave, mostly for their damage. So I have one Flying Kite tier here, and the rest of my 
pieces all have shadow weave damage. So that's what you generally want. And that's what you put this skill, this square on. Okay, now these hexagons are kind of the most important piece. They are specific effects. So if you know what heroic gear is, it basically has the majority of those hero heroic gear effects in place. Uh, so for example, this top piece has attack to attack. Some other pieces have like party buffs. Some other pieces have uh, skill damage, stacking increase, MP cost reduction, etc., etc. There's a lot of them. But in general, if you're doing a player versus environment build, what you're going to want for your top piece is this one right here, attack, attack. And then for your bottom piece, you're going to want physical attack power or magical attack power, depending on your class. I think some classes might be okay with running attack speed, but I'm not sure. And then for gloves, you're going to want skill damage increase. Now currently on NA, we have this skill stacking damage increase. Um, however, soon in KR, there is an update that changes skill stacking increase. It's going to make it so that you can't get that anymore. And instead, it's going to be replaced with a flat skill damage increase. So, you know, both are okay. I mean, I guess in the most optimal situations, you're going to be getting a little more damage out of the skill stacking type rather than the uh, flat skill damage increase. But there are pros and cons to both. Um, and then finally on your shoes, shoes is the tier that has the most freedom of choice. So most people will usually want to go with uh, MP cost reduction or boss damage. However, I'm running bravery skill cooldown. Uh, skill cooldown is, is viable, but I'm running it in particular because uh, there it, it reduces my shadow weave cooldown to under 15 seconds. So it makes it a lot easier for me to maintain these stacks right here talk about in this glove. Okay, so uh, player versus environment, attack, attack, raw damage, skill damage, sk uh, skill stacking, and then you have freedom here, usually MP cost reduction, boss damage, or I don't know, something else. Uh, oh, defense ignore is another is another viable one. Okay, um, now finally to talk about the last type of tier, the circle. So circles are uh, basically just like kind of kind of like extra sockets really um on a player versus environment build the best socket the best circle to get is critical damage so as you can see all of my this piece has critical damage in right now and all of mine have two percent critical damage as well as i have a handful in the bank for for later now if you notice there's actually extra lock slots here and uh, where you can put extra circles into. Now these will unlock when this armor piece itself becomes a plus nine, that this line is going to unlock, and plus 10, so this line is going to unlock. So like the Mega Whales really have a reason to upgrade their armor to like plus 10, uh, which I'm probably going to plan to do eventually. And by doing that, they also unlock these extra slots, allowing them to put like more critical damage or whatever onto it. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to talk about um, purple sets. So while PVE wants the attack attack, raw damage, skill damage, whatever on the shoes, uh, generally what you want for your purple set is party buffs. So for example, this one has party critical, 7%, attack speed, 9%. I don't have one there, I don't have one there. But then uh, you want, uh, I think, additional damage on gloves and then maximize on shoes usually if you're on a pure... PVE set. Um, so yeah, so the the base armor itself is not what's very expensive. It's these individual tiers that you put into them that are really expensive, and and the cost of that can really add up. So oh, how to get tiers? So uh, if you notice, there's a lot of random tiers and stuff in my inventory. You can get that either by getting uh, fragment powder and then going over here to our friend the blacksmith you hit trade and then you can trade these in uh, you can trade these in right so you have top piece bottom piece gloves shoes whatever all the colors and if you're just starting out it might be most effective to do this just so that your El Reno gear will like begin to have the set effect so for, for, for something uh, for you to work with to start with um 
And later on, some people like to gamble by pulling those tiers and then trying to get something good to resell. Uh, I mean, it's if you want to do that, like you can't really be stopped. Um, you can farm them in dungeons. In El Reno dungeons, they're going to drop here. Most people run 11.4 or I guess 11.3 and level 11.5 have pretty decent drop rates on the uh, tiers. And uh, finally, the last way is to do Drabaki. The Drabaki raid also drops a lot of tiers, especially if you're geared and you can get a good score. And finally, the last one is you can actually buy them off the board. So for example, if we search for red proficiency tier, so you can search red proficiency tier and we're gonna see like a lot of people have put up their own tiers on the board for you to buy. And you want to be a little careful with this because uh, it might like because some people might overprice them a lot, and uh, in order for you to trade them, you have to seal them. So that's kind of a whole nother story. Yeah. So hopefully that was clear, and you guys understand how LRA Node Gear works, uh, where to get it, how to upgrade it, how to make it good. And uh, if you have any other questions, just, I guess, I don't know, just, uh, throw a comment or something, and I'll take a look at it and answer it when I have a chance. Okay, cool. See you guys.